gesture without a tie, it can often end up looking incomplete. Now, I'm not saying anybody giving their speech today with a dress shirt and no tie looks incomplete. I mean, out in the real world, where situations call for it. But it's important to wear your tie in those situations because it can really add to your presence. There's many different knots to choose from that can tailor to any of your specific needs. I'm only going to show you how to tie one, though. First, let's go back to how a tie can really boost your appearance. Ties do make a difference. Now, wearing a tie doesn't necessarily affect you positively, but not wearing one can affect you negatively. And the places that require ties seem to be decreasing day by day, but there's still several places that the tie is almost necessary. And here's just a few of them. Job interviews, weddings, funeral, or when they lay you in your casket, but hopefully you won't have to tie that tie. Now wearing a shirt without a tie is a lot like wearing a shoe without laces. It's awkward, serves no purpose, and you just wouldn't do it. Now like I said, there's many different types of knots. I'm going to tell you about several of them. The first one is a foreign hand knot which is an asymmetrical knot that looks good with all button-down shirts. Then there's the Windsor knot, which is a symmetrical knot that looks good with spread collar shirts. And finally, we have the Pratt knot, which is a symmetrical knot that's wide and looks good with just about any type of formal wear. You would choose one specific to your needs, but I prefer the Pratt knot because of how versatile it is, and you can use it for just about any situation. In fact, that's the one I'm going to show you how to tie today. The first step in tying when you need to tie, you got to put your collar up. And you take your tie and place it seam down on your neck. You want to give the wide end a little twist so that the seam is facing outward. And you also want it at like the tip of your thigh so that it will end up the right length when you're done. Now the first step in actually tying is to take the wide end and move it from the right to the left behind the short end and grab it at the cross section. Then you take the wide end again and stick it down from the top and pull it behind the cross section off to the left and tight. Then you re-grab the knot and grab the wide end again and take it from the left to the right. You want to form a little bridge over your hand. And then you take the wide end and you go the opposite way you did before and take it from the bottom up behind the cross section and pull it up. But you don't want to pull it tight because this next step, you're taking it through that bridge you made. So you take the wide end, pull it down through, and then you want to tighten. You tighten by grabbing the wide end and the end above the knot on the right. You want to tighten it gently because you don't want to pull it too tight because you can lose the form of the knot. And after you got it tightened, you grab the knot and the short end in the other hand and move in opposite direction and pull it up towards your collar. Now ideally you want the tie probably a little longer than this, like down at the tip of your belt or so, but that'll take you a couple times before you're ready to walk out the door. Even the most experienced tie tires tie their tie several times before they leave. Now after that, you put your collar down, and voila, you have the crap knot. Now wearing a tie is important because it can boost your appearance. There's many different ones to choose from for just about any occasion. So I hope you took something from this, and I hope you remember, so next time you're in a situation that calls for a tie, you won't be left looking incomplete. Thank you very much.